David Powers. He is very skilled in a number of things. Uh, good morning, David. Hey, how you doing? It's a great day. It's nice and sunny. The weather is getting a little bit sunny just in time for us to go out and get some chores done before the bad weather. All right, so what I wanted to talk about today was the top 10 reasons. Now, we always love this, and what I wanted to do is give you a nice list to go home with to help you serve God better. So I wanted to give you top 10 reasons to fail. Because the reason I want to do that is because we run into so many things in life and we always choose excuses and things that get in the way and, and get between us and God and us and the wonderful plan He has for us. And so the way I think is, if we can identify that excuse, if we can identify the thing that's given us a reason to fail, then we can destroy it. We can go all Lord of the Rings on it, and get rid of it, and kill it, and get it out of our life. That way it's not And so it's a very lonely trip. I mean, seven days on the mountain, and I'm climbing, and I'm walking, and I finally get to the point where I can see the summit. I can see way off. I can see the very top of the mountain. And so this part of the se section of the trail, I'm walking, and there's a cliff on the left side of me going up. And it's straight up. You can't climb that. On the right side is the cliff going straight down into the volcano crater. You don't want to go that way. I'm on this little snowy trail. And I'm in my heavy boots, all my winter clothes, and two walking sticks, and I'm just plodding them all. And it's eerily quiet. You can't hear anything but the wind and the sound of your boots crunching in the snow. And, but I can see that summit. I can see the goal. And so I'm walking along, just enjoying life, thinking about how wonderful things are. And all of a sudden, boom, the trail collapses underneath me. This little snow bridge I was walking on collapses, and I fall. And, you know, from zero to nothing, in one second, I am sliding down towards the crater on the snow. And I'm clawing through the ice. The walking sticks are strapped to my hands, and they're flapping around and smacking me every time they hit a rock. And I'm sliding and sliding and sliding. And finally, well, I'll tell you what, I'll get to the rest of that story here in a minute. And so back to the story. I was sliding down the snowbank into a volcano, which ordinarily is always a bad thing. I always advise against that. And glaciers all around me, snow, and... I'm also by myself. And so here I am sliding down, and finally I get two hands on one of my ski poles, and I jam it in the snow, and I slide a little bit, and it yanks me, but I stop. I finally stop myself from sliding, and I just lay there for a minute. Because you know how they say when bad things happen, and time slows down, and your life flashes before your eyes? It's weird, but it really is true. When you've been in life-threatening situations, time just slows down, and so, I was thinking of all the things that I've never done, all the things I had done that I regretted. And, and also on top of all that, I was thinking, you know what, if I go all the way to the bottom, how long is it going to be before somebody finds my bones and, and sends them home? And so all these things went through my mind, but I'm, I'm, I'm safe for now. I'm stopped. And so I managed to use the two poles and climb my way back up the snowbank to the, the trail that collapsed underneath me. And I just sit there for a minute. And I'm looking back down the mountain. I'm looking up the mountain and there's still nobody around, I'm completely by myself. And even more than that, I'm too out of shape to be here. I should not be here. But I didn't let that stop me, but you know, I, I realized, you know what, I probably should have gotten in better shape before I came. But I kept walking. I just turned left, kept walking up the trail. I didn't want to let that get in the way because I'm so close to the summit. Just the way that sometimes we are so close to what God has planned for us. And so I'm right there, and I don't want to give up. I can't at this point. And so I just keep walking. And so finally, I'm there. I'm at the top. I've done this thing that I was way too out of shape to do. I've done this thing that almost killed me already. But I'm finally there. I, I see what was on the other side of the difficulty. I see what was on the other side of that excuse of number nine. And I'm there, and finally, not only that, I'm on top of the tallest mountain in the entire country a couple weeks ago. Now that's not normal, because most nine-year-olds are supposed to be playing video games all the time. But me not giving in the number nine as an excuse got him interested in running. And so now he races with me. Now the difference is, though, that when we're racing together, this is him, right here. This is him looking back at me, <laughs> waving. And he likes to tell people how much he beats me. And he just, he, he slows down enough that he can see me and keep an eye on me in case I pass out or something. But he runs way faster. Right here. All right. Clap. Ready, please? Step. Okay.
Okay, I have a side look back. Good. All right. I need. Uh